Hello, everybody. This is International Master Jesse Cry, and I'd like to tell you today about a magical game I witnessed recently. You see, I do this weekly lecture at the local borders here in Santa Fe, and a modest, shy second grader named Van asked me to do a lecture on his favorite Halloween gambit. Now, the Halloween gambit goes like this. Knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, knight f6, and here comes the terrorizing move. Knight takes e5. White gives up a whole piece just for a central pawn. And so, you know, I'm doing this lecture, and all of a sudden, just pandemonium erupts amongst the audience. We're screaming, how ridiculous! You know, it's just simply too much. And it soon became clear that the chess principles of a vast section of the audience had been deeply offended. These were the materialists, the people that believed you just couldn't give a piece away like this. And their champion was the stalwart sixth grader, Niccolo. And he's a contender for the state elementary championship crown here in New Mexico, and so he's no bad player. And the debate became heated, and discussion had to give way to a duel to the death. Now, I greatly feared for the younger and less experienced Van, but then a miracle occurred. Van was so happy to play the Halloween that he did a dance, and quite a dance it was, and within moments, the meek young Van was transformed into a long-haired, overfared, leaping gnome. And I wanted to show you now the game where Van was transformed. He had some help from the audience, but he just played an incredible game against the sixth grader here. So knight takes e5 was played. d4, this is the point of the Halloween Gambit. We're going to shoo white's knights away f from the center and take control of the center and try to gain some development advantage as well. So Niccolo went back. That seems reasonable. Then Van pushed him away again, and he went back. And now Van just played a very logical-looking move. He played bishop c4, attacking this pawn. And we're going to see that in this game, White's bishops are especially are very strong. And right there with bishop c4, he's attacking Black's weakest pawn, and he's controlling a nice central square. Okay, Niccolo played bishop b4, pinning the knight to the king, and developing a piece. Can't be all that bad. And now queen f3. This is what's called developing with, a, with attack. So by forcing black to defend, we're able to bring out our pieces quicker. And so white threatens a checkmate on f7. And Niccolo defends with queen e7. Okay, Van just makes another simple developing move. Castles. And... Um, it's still quite a debate in the audience. People didn't know quite what to think of this position. Um, it was clear that White has control of the center and has better developed. But still, shouldn't that piece of blacks be just as good or better than all those advantages that White has? So it's kind of an interesting position to think about in terms of who you think is better here, White or Black. I, for myself, aren't actually certain what's going on. I think, I, I guess I would say that White has good compensation for his problems. Now, the first thing is that White is threatening this move knight to d5, which would fork the queen and the bishop. So Niccolo had to take now on c3. And Van correctly, I think, took back with a pawn. Now, this doubles the pawns, but what it does is it gives our pieces actually more move, room to move around in. It gives this rook this square, and it gives this bishop this square here. So, um, here I think Niccolo made his only mistake of the game, and I think that's how brutal this Halloween gambit is, is that just one mistake can end the game. Um, Probably what he should do here is he should just realize that he's going to suffer for a little bit and he should try to crawl, curl up into a little ball by playing knight h6 in castles and uh, just try to create some kind of safe situation for his king. Instead of that, Niccolo played d6, which looks like a very normal move. Um, but the problem, see, is that 
what Niccolo's doing with these six is he's, it's like he's opening all the windows and doors onto his house. Because now all of a sudden, this diagonal is open, and we're going to see that because Niccolo's kind of putting these pawns into battle, they can be exchanged at any moment, and this rook can come over here. And um, not only that, but then we get this move, bishop a3 is possible too, which pins the pawn to the queen. So it's kind of funny is that the position seemed very close, but the second Niccolo played d6, it's like all of his windows are open, and there's all kinds of ways now for white to come in. In fact, I think here, Van could have also, he played a good move, but Van could have also played bishop b5. That would have also been strong. Um, the point is that if bishop d7, then queen takes pawn, the knight's attack, and uh, if c6, then bishop takes c6. And pawn takes can't be played because of queen takes forking all of black stuff. But, now, I like Van's philosophy in this game. His idea was, I just want to develop. I want to bring out all my guys. So he played bishop a3. And that's also a very good move. Notice now, not only do we have this bishop, but we have this bishop raking the board as well. And we're going to see those bishops are the heroes of the game. They really control a lot of space on those diagonals. Now, here is a difficult situation uh, for Niccolo. And he started realizing it here because not only did the bishop put some pressure on that diagonal, but it connected the rooks. And what that means is now white can put a rook here and it'll be protected. So, for example, if Niccolo had played something like um, knight at six, we could take and then play rook e1 with all kinds of grief upon uh, the e file. And you can't even really block because of d5. So there's a lot of grief here in this position for Niccolo. And so Niccolo made a move um, that really discoordinated his position, but in a lot of ways it was admirable. He's just trying to hold things together without losing anything. He plays queen d7. Now this is a typical materialist move. See, he wants to keep all his stuff. He doesn't want to give anything away. But at the same time, he's discoordinating his stuff. And what I mean by that is now when he puts his queen there, his bishop won't be able to get out. And because his bishop can't get out, his rook really can't get out either. And also that move queen d7 just gives um, Van another, another chance to just move himself, a tempo. Um, so already, I guess we would have to say that Niccolo's in deep, deep trouble here in this position.